Well, it seems like every great organization has at least one motivating person behind it. And for the Peterson Automotive Museum, that person was Robert E. Peterson, who was a local Southern California man, born and raised near Los Angeles, who founded a publishing empire beginning in 1948. He started out at MGM Studios when he was probably 18 or 19 during the war, World War II. And in those days, the veteran publicists were of draft age and they were all drafted into World War II. So the deal was that if you were drafted, you would get your job back when the war was over. So in the meantime, they hired a lot of very young people like Mr. Peterson. He started out as a messenger and then he got into the publicity department. He finally went into the Army Air Corps. There was no Air Force at the time and he never saw duty overseas, he was just stateside. The interesting thing is they gave him a camera and they said, you're gonna go up and photograph reconnaissance pictures. So that's how he became a photographer. And then the war ended and he got mustered out in about 46. So he went back to MGM and they said, we're very sorry, but we don't have a job for you because the other guys had come back. So he and a buddy that were, they were all messengers and people from MGM, he and a man named Bob Lindsay, got interested in the idea of cars. And all of a sudden, all these GIs come back and they have all this pay that's been accruing in their little bank accounts and they all want to buy a car. They started a company called Hollywood Publicity Associates. So they got their first assignment was to publicize a car show at the Los Angeles Armory, which no longer exists. So they got this hot rod show and then they decided that they would create a little pamphlet that talked about what these cars were that you were gonna see at the car show. This is 1947. So 1940, they thought, wow, this is something we could publicize and, you know, maybe we, there's so many people coming to see these cars, maybe we should start a magazine. That's what they did. 1948, first issue of Hot Rod Magazine in January, 1948. The Hot Rod hobby had no better friend than Robert E. Peterson, who founded Hot Rod Magazine in 1948. A year later, he founded Motor Trend Magazine, and the rest, as they say, is history. After that, more than two dozen magazines of all kinds, for all interests, were part of Mr. Peterson's publishing empire. Today, he's one of the best remembered hot rod enthusiasts, not only for his passion, but for his desire to build an automotive museum, to teach people what came to be, how it came to be, and to celebrate the automotive culture that he helped found. Robert E. Peterson was a household name because he was the publisher of Hot Rod Magazine. And I grew up in Hollywood, and the first subscription I had was Hot Rod Magazine, and that impacted my life in a very big way. For me, Pete was otherworldly. He was involved in so many aspects of life that I admired and had such an impact on me that that kind of drew us together. And then as time went on, we continued to evolve through the automobile, but our friendships and our social lives were primary, and I just loved being with him. We, we fl flew globally with him, uh, we spent a lot of time together, and it was all joyous. He was a very special guy. You know, like most sales guys, I met Mr. Peterson at, uh, at an event. And back in those days, Peterson Publishing had some of the finest suites at all the major racetracks across the country. And our job as salespeople was to entertain our customers there. And for the bigger races, Mr. Peterson would come to town uh, and be there to, uh, I, I don't want to say hold court because he wasn't that kind of guy. Despite his wealth and stature, he was just a regular guy. And I believe I met him uh, for the first time at our suite in Daytona, which was uh, just a kind of a passing. And it was, uh, it was a big deal to me because he was you know, a guy that I really admired, knowing that he had started my favorite magazine, which I now worked for, which was, you know, also a big deal. He and I really started talking more often uh, about uh, the museum uh, when the subject 
of the, the company's photo archives came up because I had moved repeatedly to protect the archives to make sure that nothing happened to them. And I had interest uh, in making sure that nothing ever did happen to him uh, because of all the corporate changes. The last time I had lunch with him actually was about uh, the archives and moving it to the museum. Having decided to build an automotive museum, Mr. Peterson now had to find a place to put it. Well, one of the buildings he briefly considered when he was moving his publishing empire was this building, an entire city block on the corner of Wilshire and Fairfax that used to be an Orbach's department store. Mr. Peterson said this would make a great automotive museum. It's three stories, it's a robust building, you can fill it full of cars and not worry about it, and it has an attached thousand car parking structure. He's just a wonderful guy, and Mrs. Peterson and I became great friends, and she and I did a lot of crazy things together. We used to do the interior decorating of all of the sales office buildings. Uh, we also had suites at the various arenas in Detroit, Joe Louis Stadium, and uh, we did things like that. Between the two of them, Mr. and Mrs. Peterson and myself, we were kind of a little troika. <laughs> But Mr. Peterson, he was such a great guy, and Mrs. Peterson was so wonderful. I mean, it, you know, why would I ever want to leave two people that I really enjoyed being with? We worked hard, believe me, there were 12-hour days. I just loved what I did. I loved my work, I loved the people that I was involved with. I thought it was a great industry to be involved in, and I still do. Mr. Peterson used to uh, have a saying, you could cor correct somebody's writing but you couldn't teach him the passion uh, that went behind it. So when we hired uh, writers or salespeople or photographers or anybody that we looked to hire, we hired people who were passionate about the industry and really loved it. It made it a very, very special place because we all shared that bond. If Margie and Pete walked through the doors today, they would be beaming with pride because they recognized talent and they were very good at delegating to people that could produce. And I don't think in their wildest dreams they would ever expect to see what we have today. And that makes me exceptionally proud and proud for them.